All right, great. Cool. Um, so it's 45, might be 46. So, I mean, we might as well just get started in our first position, which will be on our back. Um, I'm going to invite you to come into heart bench again to start. Full moon, open up the heart, open up the chest. So I'll just explain briefly just in case you never know you might forget heart bench you have the furthest block on the tallest height that's going to go beneath your head and then the block that's closest to you will go will line your spine so you make you want to make sure you have the edge the, the edge closest to you start where the ribs begin and then feel the shoulder blades kind of wrap around the bottom block and then once you land, you might need to adjust a couple times where the tallest block goes beneath your head. You really want to tuck your chin and let the block just kind of press onto the base of the skull. And do whatever with your legs. You could have the soles of the feet touching, knees out wide. You could have the, the feet flat on the mat. Maybe even the legs just want to go long tonight. And let the arms spread out, take up space here in some way, you know could have the arms maybe come up overhead, hold on to opposite wrist for a couple breaths, whatever you're in the mood for. And once you find somewhere that feels comforting, it feels heart opening, it feels somewhere you can sink a little and let go, then really pause there for a moment. Take like three deep breaths, reevaluate. And if you're good, come back to this, come back to the sinking. And if not, adjust. Do what you gotta do. <sighs> Opening up class and heart bench can offer a lot of benefits that might not be scientific. <laughs> it might just it just feels good. Really starting the practice um, with a stretch but also starting the practice of just getting into your body, allowing yourself to really drop in and arrive here. So wherever you are, do just that. Drop in. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Allow the exhale to soften your face. Take any tension out of the cheeks, the forehead, the mouth, the jaw. Take another deep inhale through the nose. Allow that exhale to release anything in the chest, the shoulders, the arms. Let the fingers, maybe you wiggle them a little and then let them go. Taking another deep inhale, just, you know, scanning the body. Exhale, release any tension in the hips. Let that go through the thighs, all the way down to your toes. And you can do that as many times as you like, as specific as you'd like, as broad. Just getting in tune with the body here, where the breath has access, where it might not. Might be feeling a lot, feeling a lot everywhere, physically, mentally. Coming into our last and final full moon of 2020. And it's in Capricorn, I mean, sorry, not Capricorn, it's in Cancer. It's a lot of heat, it's a lot of, of just energies that could be, you know, arriving to the surface. And of course, just added a heightened emotions of the time of the year. You know, we're st starting a new year. It's a big mark, at least, you know, um, on our calendar it is. <laughs> but it is, it's, it's a good mark for us, whether that's marking you're in the middle of something, starting something, ending something, wherever you are. It's a nice mark. But this full moon is allowing us access to really um, get into the expansion and the adventure. It's, it's lighting that sector part of our lives. And of course, this isn't what we're going to adventure, what we're going to expand. But it's kind of thinking back to six months ago. You know, what were you doing during that cancer season of 2020, which is usually around July? You know, how have you grown? How have you become the person you are now between that time? So that's really what it's causing, a calling for this full moon. And of course, arriving on our mat allows us to just drop even deeper on a, a, a deeper level than 
you know, sometimes we can even we can't even wrap wrap around with our own mind. Our body and our breath is going to do that for us. So it's beautiful to arrive here in this moment. Let's take another deep breath in through the nose and let it go. We're going to start to draw the arms in. Start to lift the knees up if they're still out wide. Let the feet come to the mat. Press your elbows into the mat as you start to tuck your chin and roll yourself back up to sit. Walk the feet forward a little. Feel the spine rounding over the knees. And just curl in like this for a couple breaths. You could sway. You could be still. Whatever being here means to you, doing whatever that means, start to come up to sit. So we're going to um, actually get started in Virasana today. I think it's a good, uh, a nice adjustment, especially when it's, it's just you and me. We've got some time. I like to sit on a block for Virasana. You're more than welcome to do whatever you would like. You could um, wrap up a blanket or even a pillow. We're going to come onto our knees and place um, our prop in between our heels medium, lowest, whatever height you like. And then start to, before you sit down, take your two peace fingers and just take them be behind the knees. Move that like calf flesh out of the way. Give your knee some space as you sit down. And then once you sit, come onto the edge of whatever you're sitting on, edge of your prop. And then feel the power, the empowerment as you come into your seat here. This virasana really allows you to feel uplifted. The shoulders are dropping, but the heart is lifting. The thighs are relaxed, and the hands could be wherever on your thighs. Palms could be facing up, could be facing down. We're just going to give the shoulders a roll by the ears, back and down. <laughs> Maybe even give your thighs just a little rub, just to connect to where you are. Maybe another roll here, up, back, and down. Maybe up and forward, getting into the body. And tuck the tailbone. Really let the spine get long. We don't really notice when we're sitting up like this, we have an arch in our back. So allow the spine to get uh, long in the, the low back. And then allow the eyes to close. This way we can actually imagine ourselves like we have puppet strings in our ear tips, feeling lifted here. So allowing the chin to tuck, shoulders are drawing back. Take a deep breath here and let it go. Let's just gather our hands at heart center, lifting the heart to the thumbs. I don't do this often, especially virtually. You know, it's hard to connect sometimes just through a screen, but I'd love to start this practice out with um, just one sound of OM. If you feel inclined to, par to participate with me and, and sing along or chant along, please do so. Um, and if you just want to listen in, please just listen in. Just try to stay here, stay connected. And whatever OM means to you, th it can mean whatever. And this is the moment where we're, we'll um, take in our manifestations and the intentions. Of course, anything you want to set up for yourself and just for your practice, just for the next hour. That's all we're looking for. So spread the fingers wide, lift the heart towards the thumbs, relax the shoulders. Let's take a deep breath in for OM. Uh, you could keep the eyes closed or flutter them open. Keep the hands at heart center. We're going to interlace the fingers and then press the palms forward. So lengthen the arms. Keep the shoulders relaxed. Really press the thumbs away. Feel the shoulder blades rounding the back. On an inhale, start to lift the arms up. Maybe you um, let the eyes follow the fingers. Open the chest. Really press those pinkies back towards the back of your mat. Open up the heart. Take another deep inhale. Exhale, tuck the chin. Press the palms forward and round the spine. Really open up the back of the heart. Inhale, scoop the heart forward and up. Exhale, tuck it in. Seated cat pose. Inhale, lift up. One more time. Exhale, curl it in. Inhale, rise up. We'll release the hands. Take hold of the right wrist with the left fingers and just take a lean to your left. Feel a little far from the ground. That's okay. Let the gaze go past the right arm. Feel those left ribs wrapping under and over. Really open up the right side body. One more breath here. 
and exhale, stay here. <sighs> Inhale, rise up, and we're going to take a twist to our right. So again, the, the floor, the mat might feel far. Bring that right hand either to the low back, maybe to that left hip crease right here. And then that left hand's going to try to reach for the right thigh. Open up the chest. Let the gaze go past the right shoulder. Keep sitting up tall, tucking the tailbone. In these twists, sitting up tall, we're already activating the core. So start to feel the navel draw back and up towards the spine. And then twist a little further. One more breath. And then exhale, stay twisted. Reach that right hand behind you. Plant the hand on the mat. So now you're going to lean back. On your inhale, sweep the left arm up. Lift the hips. Maybe the left arm frames the ears. Stay here for at least three breaths, really pressing the hips towards the front of the mat, opening the chest. Take another deep inhale. Exhale, lower the hips down. Come back to your seat and face forward. Just roll the shoulders a little. Come back into your space. And on inhale, sweep the arms out and up. Take hold of the left wrist with the right fingers and lean to your right. Rooting down through the left sits bone as you reach through the left fingertips. Open up the chest. Really spin the heart towards the sky. Take another full breath. And exhale, rise up. We're going to twist to the left. Left hand behind you, right hand to the thigh. Maybe that left hand comes to the block, low back, whatever allows you to open the chest. It's okay to feel restricted here, just getting some type of twist in that spine. Let the gaze go past the left shoulder. One more full inhale. Exhale, lower the left hand to the mat. Plant the palm on an inhale. Reach those hips up as you lift the right arm. Maybe the frame the ear. Beautiful. Open up. Feel the stretch. You could roll the wrist. You know, do whatever feels good here. We're, now we're going to take it to the other side. So we're going to flow here since we, feel out, we felt out both sides. So one more breath here. On your exhale, lower the hips, come down. We're going to plant the right hand behind us, lift up. So move with the breath. Exhale, lower down, switch sides. Left hand down, right arm lifts. Exhale down. And it's okay if we're not flowing in the same direction. Just inhale to lift. Exhale to switch. We'll just do it one more time. Beautiful. Be exaggerated and dramatic doing this. Next time you lift the left arm, stop there, and then we're just going to pause face forward. Climb it forward into a tabletop position. So move those props out of your way. Let yourself take all the space. Stack the wrists beneath the elbows and the knees beneath the hips. Yep, tuck the tailbone, let the energy go towards the heels. Tuck the chin and start to move in through some cat-cow. So lift the hips on your inhale, drop the belly, lift the gaze. On your exhale, tuck the tailbone, round the spine, release the head for cat pose. Inhale, scoop the heart forward and up. Exhale, starting with the hips, tuck the tailbone, hollow out the abdomen. One more round, inhale to lift up everything. Exhale, let it go, tuck it in. Next time you inhale, come to a neutral spine. We're going to stretch the right leg long behind us. So just rock back and forth on the ball of the foot, getting out some kinks. Lift the leg up, rotate the ankle this way, pointing the toe, flexing the foot, go in both directions. And then begin to bend the knee. Press the heel into the sky. Start to circle out the knee here, getting into the hip. One direction and then the other. Yep, again, firing up that core. And then we're going to pause with the circles. Keep that leg lifted. Start to step the right foot outside of the right hand. You might need to step the foot further forward. Maybe slide the, the back knee back a little. So our hands are inside the right foot, and we're finding a lizard lunge. Just taking it early, taking it easy, letting the heart, like, energy go forward, and sinking the top of the left thigh down. Take this out however you'd like. You could stay on the hands. Again, it's early. 
you could grab the blocks, maybe climb to forearms or even climb all the way down. Wherever you are, just keep breathing into that left hip and hugging the right knee in towards the shoulder. Just another breath here. On your inhale, lift up and remove any blocks or any props out of the way. And then pour weight into the left hand. We're going to climb the right hand onto the thigh. Start to spin the torso towards the right side. So another twist here. On your inhale, reach the right arm back as if you're, you're reaching for someone behind you. You could stay here just like this, or maybe you bend that back knee and capture the left foot. Beautiful. Whatever allows you to open the chest. Again, smearing those left ribs across the chest. Take another breath, sinking that left thigh down. On your exhale, release the foot. We're going to plant the right hand back to the right thigh. I'll press into that hand and lift yourself up as you begin to heel toe the right foot closer back in. So that now the knee is more in line with the hip. Yep. And then on an inhale, sweep the arms forward and up. You feel the shoulders stacking over the hips. Feel like you could squeeze your thighs together here. Lift up, wrapping those triceps in towards the ears. Take a deep inhale to lengthen the, the spine. On your exhale, shift the hips forward. Cactus arms open up. Inhale, rise up. Move with the breath. Exhale, shift it forward. Open up the chest. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, shift it forward. Keep going forward to plant the, the hands, framing the front foot. Tuck the back toes, step it back to, a, back to your tabletop. Keep the, both toes tucked, so I did that on purpose. <laughs> Walk the hands about a handprint forward. We're going to shift the shoulders past the wrists, and this time just lower all the way to the mat. Tuck the chin, ground the forehead, tops of the feet on the mat. On your inhale, lift up, baby cobra. Hug the shoulder blades in towards each other. Exhale, head down. Just press your way back up to tabletop. Maybe sway the hips a little. We'll move through a few more cat cows. So on your inhale, lift the hips. Drop the belly, lift the gaze. On your exhale, tuck the tailbone, round the spine, release the head. Move through a few more rounds with your breath, your audible sound. Of course, in this moment, cultivating that ujjayi breath. Next time you inhale, come to a neutral spine. Tuck, tucking the tailbone, plugging the head in. We'll stretch the left leg long behind us and just rock back and forth. Getting into this, the toes, the ankle, the knee, the hip. We'll get into the whole thing. Lift the leg up. Roll it out. And you could play with the hips here. I always it, it encourage doing that just to kind of feel what leveled squared hips feels like, a leveled sacrum. And then we'll bend the knee, pressing the heel up towards the ceiling. Start to roll out the hip. And in this moment, be mindful about keeping the weight evenly distributed in the hands. Pause when you're finished. Just lift the left leg up, and then we'll step this foot outside of the left fingers. So trying to keep all of that um, no hands type of balance. Walk your hands forward. Settle into your lizard lunge. Maybe that's sliding the back leg back, hugging the left knee in, keeping the spine long. So do whatever you need to do to settle here for a couple more breaths. And pondering on um, the full moon in Cancer, you know, again, what that means to you. How is that highlighting your expansion, your adventure that you've just taken on for the last six months? What does it mean to you? And you can keep asking yourself over and over again until something comes up with an answer. Don't always, you know, expect an answer. We'll climb back onto the hands, so moving any props out of the way. Pouring weight into the right hand, lift the left hand to the left thigh. Encourage that pressing into the, uh, into the thigh to encourage the twist. 
I don't know what I was trying to say. We're going to lift the left arm up. Let the fingers reach back for the back of the mat. And then maybe you bend that right leg, holding on to the foot, opening up the chest. Whatever you're in the mood for, whatever you have energy for tonight. Take another deep breath just like this. Exhale, release. We'll unwind, face forward, and start to bring that left hand to the left thigh. Press it in so you, that you lift up, pressing into the left foot. Heel toe that foot in a little bit. Lift up for a low lunge. On your exhale, cactus arms, shift those hips forward. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, cactus arms. Really feel the pull in that psoas muscle. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, lean it forward. One more time, rise up. Exhale, lean it forward, plant the hands. We're going to tuck the back toes, send the back knee to meet the right knee. Tuck those toes, shift it forward, lower the belly all the way to the mat. Untuck the toes, tuck the chin. On your inhale, lift up, baby cobra. Exhale, lower down, tuck the toes. Start to build your way all the way up to downward facing dog. Taking your time to get there. Pedaling out the feet as much as you'd like. And I always like to send the gaze like past the, the left tricep. So send the, the head all the way under. Find a nice twist, breathing into the back of the leg. And then take it to the other side. Gaze going past the shoulders. <sighs> Keep finding your breath, dropping into the, this moment of now right here. Really rooting down through the fingers. Wrap the triceps in. Feel this long line of energy through the fingertips, out through the hips. Take another deep, full breath. Exhale, let it go. Look at your hands. Start to walk the hands back towards the feet. You might start to feel the heels drop. As you do that, just feeling all four corners of your feet pressing into the mat. Start to hinge at the hips. Find a rag doll here. Swaying, maybe holding on to opposite wrists or elbows. <sighs> Continuing to come into the breath. So many distractions, so many things happening. Come back here. Release your arms, release your hands. Deepen the bend in your knees and start to sweep the hands back. Find like airplane arms. Like you're holding a beach ball in your hands on an inhale, rise up. Lean it back, slight arch in the back. Exhale, cactus arms. And then lower the hands down. Find Tadasana at the back of your mat. Just swaying a little. Come into your space. Your feet could be hip width distance. They could be closer together. Whatever allows you to feel powerful here, here in this Tadasana's mountain pose stance. So rooting down to lift up the pelvis. Zip up in the midline. Open the chest. Take a deep breath in here. And let it go. We're going to start to interlace the fingers at the low back. Really press the knuckles down in towards the earth. Open up the chest. Find this nice arch, this opening. Slight bend in the knees. Lead with the heart as you exhale to fold forward. Keep the fingers interlaced. Send the knuckles towards the sky. Breathe here for a couple breaths. Maybe you roll out the shoulders. Keep a slight bend in the knees as you inhale to rise all the way up, leading with the knuckles. Let the knuckles face down. Lift the face. Take another breath. On your exhale, fold it forward. You could keep those fingers interlaced if this feels nice. Take another breath just like this. And then on your exhale, release the hands down. Bend the knees. Start to walk the hands forward, stretching out into your downward facing dog. Lift those hips up high. And then we're going to rise to the balls of the feet and take a step forward. Again, to shorten our down dog. I hope this translates well. So let's see if I get my rights and lefts mixed up. <laughs> we're going to lift the left heel up. So staying in down dog, lift your left heel up. And then start to stretch the right hand outside of that ankle and grab onto the heel. So you're in this twisted down dog. Once you get here, press your heel down and just find a twist. Breathing into the back of the right shoulder. I hope this is coming off well. <laughs> Let me know, of course, if you're confused. 
Just take another breath here. It's really stretching the hamstrings. And then we'll release that hand down. Might even help if you slide the right hand towards the middle of the mat, lift the right heel, and then slide the left hand under the heel. And you could go inner or outer. I find more of a stretch on the outer, but of course, whatever you um, have a reach for. And then we'll send the gaze underneath the right shoulder, breathing into this twist. And exhale, let it go. We're going to walk the hands back forward, start to walk towards the top of the mat, and fold. Feet are hip width distance apart. Slight bend in the knees. Sweep those arms back, finding airplane arms. On an inhale, rise up, beach ball style. Reach back, bend the back here. Press those hips forward. Exhale, arms to cactus arms. Find your Tadasana. Let the hands come by your side. Again, shake it out. What is all of this energy, this prana? What does it feel like? What does it mean to you? Now let's find a flow. So we'll root down through the feet. Inhale, reach through your widest wingspan. Lift up, palms press. Exhale, dive it forward, fold in half. Inhale, halfway up, palms to shins. Collarbones are wide. Exhale, bend the knees, plant the palms. Step it back to a high plank pose. Your choice of vinyasa. You can lower with or without the knees for chaturanga. You can lower all the way onto the mat. We'll flow together <laughs> wherever you are. On your exhale, lower your way. On your inhale, lift up, baby cobra, upward facing dog. Exhale, roll over the toes, lift the hips, downward facing dog. Beautiful. If you know your flow, just do it. Go for it. Let's do that again. Inhale, ripple forward to a high plank pose. Exhale, drive those heels back. Lower your way with or without the knees. Inhale, scoop the heart forward and up. Exhale, downward facing dog. Beautiful. Take another deep inhale here. And exhale here. Slight bend in the knees. Look past the thumbs. You could step, float, walk, whatever you want to do to the top of the mat. Inhale, land with a long spine. Exhale, fold. Root down through the feet. Inhale, rise all the way up. Palms press overhead. Gaze lifts. Exhale, hands through heart center. Tadasana. You could walk the feet together, however you're feeling. We're going to bend the knees, sink the hips, sweep the arms up by the ears. Find Utkatasana chair pose. Tuck the tailbone. Send the weight towards the heels. Look down at your toes. Maybe you lift the toes just to make sure, you know, you've got the weight in the right place. And then look back up. Raise your gaze as you lift the heart. Wrap the pinkies in. Take one more breath. Exhale, stand up. We're going to draw the left knee up with us, hands to heart center. So you probably remember this from last week. Yeah, flex the foot. Take a breath here. On your exhale, step it back. Lunge it back. We're going to lower the back knee to a, a low lunge. Lift the arms up. Keep the back toes tucked. Exhale, lift the hips. Lengthen the front leg. Fold over. Inhale, crescent lunge. Keep it high. Exhale, step it forward, chair pose. Inhale, rise up. Draw that right knee in with you. Exhale, lunge it back. Lower the back knee, lift the heart. Exhale, fold forward, airplane arms. Inhale, crescent lunge, lift up. Exhale, step it forward, Utkatasana. We'll do that one more time, both sides. Inhale, lift the left knee up, heart, hands to heart center. Exhale, lunge it back. Inhale, lower the back knee, lift the arms. Exhale, fold it forward. Inhale, high lunge. Exhale, step it forward, chair pose. Inhale, rise up, right knee comes with you. Beautiful. Exhale, lunge it back. Inhale, lift the arms, drop the knee. Exhale, stand up, fold in half. Inhale, crescent lunge. Exhale, step it forward. Stand up, fold in half. <laughs> Just pause here in Uttanasana. Shaking out the legs, feeling the heat, the vitality. Noticing what you notice. And then finding momentum on an inhale, rise up halfway. Exhale, bend the knees, plant the palms, step or hop back to flow through your vinyasa. So lower with or without the knees. 
Inhale, rise up, baby cobra, upward dog. Exhale, hips high, downward facing dog. I feel so bad I never sent you the playlist. I sent it before. <laughs> That's okay, though. We'll get you on there next week. It's a good playlist. I finally came up with something, <laughs> so I'm very proud of it. <laughs> I'll send it to you next time. <laughs> we'll come to Downward Facing Dog. <laughs> I can send it if you want to play something. It's all up to you. <laughs> it's not going to make sense now. <gasps> Take another deep breath in. Exhale, let it go. <sighs> Inhale, reach the right leg up and back. Keep those hips squared, toes facing down. And then exhale, bend knee to nose, step the foot next to the right thumb. On an inhale, rise up, high lunge. Really stacking the knee over the ankle, wrapping the pinkies in, <sighs> dropping the shoulders down the back. Take another deep inhale. Exhale. <sighs> I'm going to offer a twist here. Again, whatever you have energy for. Maybe the hands want to stay at the hips, and you can feel out any subtlety here, shifting that left hip forward. Maybe you find a twist, maybe like an arrow, just bringing the right hand towards the right shoulder. I'll switch it around like this, but of course the other way. <laughs> like this, yeah. So the left hand's going to go forward. Or you could, of course, open up into a twist, bringing the right hand behind you and the left hand forward. We'll just be here for one more breath. <sighs> on your inhale, cut through the air with the right arm. Lift up, high lunge. Exhale, warrior two. So shift the feet. You want that left foot almost parallel, excuse me, to the short edge of the mat. Nice. Arms out to a T. Gaze is forward. For a moment, check in with that front knee. Make sure that it's trekking towards the pinky side toe of the foot. Take another breath. We're going to straighten the legs, lift the arms up by the ears. Take hold of the, the right wrist with the left fingers. On your exhale, lean back towards the back of your mat. <laughs> so lean towards the left side of your body. Yep, beautiful. As you do that, exaggerate it with your hips. So lean those left hips back. Feel that stretch in the right torso. On your inhale, keep the hips there and lift the torso up. Start to shift the torso forward, so coming into triangle pose. Lower the right hand down when you're ready, when you find length. And then inhale to lift the left arm up. Beautiful. Utita Trikonasana. Extended triangle pose. Let the gaze go towards the left thumb, which is just hovering over the mouth. Tucking the chin. Keep that spine nice and long. Feel all of that energy in the right side body. Another full breath. <sighs> On your inhale, let those left fingertips lift you all the way up. We're going to gather hands to hips. Spin those right toes to the left side of the mat. Pigeon toe a little. Let the knees come out. Open up the chest. Let the elbows draw back towards each other. On a deep inhale, lengthen the spine. On your exhale, use the thumbs to fold the hips over the pelvis. Find a wide-legged fold. Release the hands to the mat and start to walk them back as much as you can. If the elbows bend, hug them in. Let the fingers either line with the toes, maybe the heel of the palm lines with the heel of the foot. Wherever you are, lift those hips up. Let the crown of the head go towards the earth. Beautiful. Press those inner thighs back. Let's take another full breath. Stay here for the exhale. Let the hands walk forward and lift the torso up. Spin the right toes to the top of the mat. Walk the hands, so deepen the bend in the right knee. Walk the hands forward to frame the front foot. Pour weight into the right foot. Inhale, rise up, crescent lunge. Beautiful. Find your breath. On your exhale, step it forward, chair pose. Tucking the chin, wrapping the pinkies. I'm sorry, tucking the tailbone, wrapping the pinkies. One more breath. Exhale, stand up, fold in half. Inhale, rise up halfway. 
Exhale, bend the knees, plant the palms, step or hop back to flow through your vinyasa or go straight to downward dog. Wait for the exhale to lower. Inhale to lift and upward dog, hips, thighs, and knees are off the mat. And then exhale over the toes, shift the hips up and back for downward facing dog. Beautiful. <sighs> On your inhale, lift the left leg up and back. Step it forward next to the, in between the thumbs. <laughs> Drive the right heel back as you face forward and rise up for crescent lunge. You got it. Beautiful. Stick with it. Relax the shoulders down. Really tilt the right hip towards the top of the mat. You Maybe you lower the hands to the hips. You do whatever you want here. Maybe you find that half twist. Right fingers going forward. Maybe the left hand just sits at the shoulder. Or you could open all the way up Ooh, as you work on your balance. <laughs> really drive the left shin forward. Nice. Take another breath here. And let it go. Cut through the air with the left arm. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, warrior two on the left side. So bend deeply into that front knee. And pay attention to your footing. You want heel to heel or heel arch alignment. Beautiful. Feel that zipping up quality. Tadasana is everywhere in these standing and balancing poses. <sighs> On your exhale, press that front leg straight. Lift the arms to frame the ears. Take hold of the left wrist with the right fingers and lean towards the back of your mat, almost like a radiant triangle. Let the gaze rise up towards the ceiling. Shift the hips back. Start to sass that right hip back. On your inhale, lift the torso up. Keep cutting that left hip under. Reach those left fingers forward. And once you find your full length, you can let the left hand come down, right arm lifts. Yeah, you could find a block and place it outside of the foot if that's helpful, always. <laughs> nice. Keep tucking the chin. Feeling like you're leaning back on a wall behind you, really using the shoulders as support. Sorry, I stepped out of frame. I just, I had the heat on. It's a little warm in here now. <laughs> Open the chest up. Just take one more breath in triangle pose. And let it go. Let the inhale lift you all the way up. Gather the hands to hips. Spin the left toes to the right side of the mat. Again, pigeon toe a little. We're going to release the hands down and interlace the fingers at the low back. Put the opposite thumb, um, yeah, put, a, put the awkward thumb on top. We haven't done that yet. So press the knuckles down, open up the chest. On an inhale, find length. Exhale, hinge at the hips. Let the knuckles go above the head and let the head go towards the earth. Really roll out the shoulders. Maybe you sway the hips. Maybe you just find some stillness. Just take one more full deep inhale. And then exhale, release the hands to the mat. Put a, soften the left knee. Start to walk the hands forward to frame that front foot. Drive the right heel back. Lift up crescent lunge. Really feel like you could hug those thighs in together. One more breath. Exhale, step it forward, chair pose. Sink those hips down. Commit to the pose. And then exhale, fold in half. And just pause here for a moment. You could place the left hand in front of the face. On an inhale, lift the right arm up. Bend the left knee. Lower the hand down. Replace the left hand. Lift that arm up. Bend into the right knee. Exhale, fold in half. Ground down into the feet. Inhale, rise all the way up. Palms press overhead. Exhale, hands through heart center. Find Tadasana. We're going to start to um, pour weight into the left foot and bring the hands to heart center. Find it helps. Start to lift the right knee up. Soften that left knee and cross the right ankle across the, the left thigh. Finding like a standing figure four. Flex the right foot. Start to sink the hips down. And allow the, the 
hands here at heart center to keep the heart lifted. You can keep folding, really breathing into that outer right hip, not busting out this ankle or this knee. Uh, you have a couple options here. You can take it all the way down and fold and maybe even feel this in the left hamstring and release the hands once you get there. You could find a twist if you dare <laughs> and hook the right elbow onto the right foot. Wherever you are, whatever you are feeling tonight, go for it. We'll just be here for a couple breaths. One more deep inhale. And let it go. Stay where you are. Start to lift yourself up, meaning keeping your legs there. <laughs> lift the hands up to heart center. Reach the right knee up. So keep the right leg lifted. Start to lunge that right leg back. We'll plant the foot down, landing on the ball of the foot. Lower the back knee. I like to reach my arms up, finding length, and then bend the right elbow and hook it outside of the left thigh. Hands back to prayer. You could stay here with the back knee lowered or maybe tuck the toes and lift the back knee, stretching that right heel towards the back of the mat. Really twist here. Open up the chest. Let the gaze rise. Take another deep inhale. Exhale, unwind. If the back knee's lifted, lower it. Let's find pigeon pose. So start to heel the heel toe the left foot across the mat. Lower ankle, shin, and knee. Really set yourself up for a sweet pigeon pose. Maybe slide the back leg back, just shifting, making sure that the hips are in line. And then when you are ready, start to walk the hands forward and find a sleeping pigeon. Nice. Maybe you make a pillow with the forearms. Maybe you find a pillow or an actual pillow, <laughs> blanket or block. <sighs> Coming into Raja Kapotasana. <sighs> King pigeon pose, although this is more of a sleeping pigeon. <laughs> <sighs> Wherever our focus goes, energy flows. So imagine you're sending your exhales to the outer left hip here. And really uh, let the energy, let the vitality flow there. And I always imagine this is causing a dam in our left hip. We're causing an energy dam. We're crunching up the hip right now rather than like stretching it. We're stretching the glute. And this could be a good thing, just like a, just like a regular actual dam. We're building up all of this energy that could be stuck, unsaid words, thoughts, who knows what's in there. We hold a lot in our hips. So then once we release, you know, I always like to pause, stretch it out, and notice feeling any, um, any sensations just flowing out of the hip there. So just take another full breath, relaxing the shoulders, and let it go. Start to lift the head up, walk the hands in. We're going to tuck the back toes, keep the knee planted, and just slide the left knee back, coming into a tabletop. And then maybe you roll out the hip here. Maybe that doesn't feel so nice, and you just want to stretch that leg back. <sighs> Whatever feels good. Letting that go. And then we'll come to a tabletop position. <sighs> Yay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> You're like, okay, how long is this class? <laughs> well, me and tabletop. <laughs> I would never torture you like that. <laughs> I was just kind of stretching out the hip here. If you just want to roll it out, <sighs> any way to release it. And then when you're ready, walk the hands forward, tuck the toes, lift the hips, find downward facing dog. Pedal out the feet. Just take one deep inhale here. And sigh it out. Rise to the balls of the feet, look past the thumbs, bend the knees, step, hop, or walk to the top of the mat. Inhale, land with a long spine halfway up, and then exhale to fold. 
Root down, inhale, rise to the top of your mountain, palms press, exhale, hands through heart center. Shake it out. Find your Tadasana. We're going to start to pour weight now. Where are we? In our right leg. Yeah, I did it. we did it opposites, but that's okay. We always do the right side first. <laughs> Bring hands to heart center. Soft bend in the right leg as you lift the left knee. We'll cross the ankle across the right thigh, flexing the foot, and begin to sink down now. Now our quads have to be super strong. <laughs> Keep lifting the heart towards the thumbs, flexing that foot. Again, you could find this twist, hooking the elbow onto the foot. That feels good. We've done a lot of twisting, so maybe you just want to feel like a fold, lifting the hips up, pressing that the um, hamstrings back on the right leg, but not locking out the knee here course, keeping it nice and soft. One more breath. Make it count. On your inhale, wherever you are, you start to lift yourself up. Hands to heart center. Let the left knee rise up. And then exhale, hug navel to spine as you step it back, landing on the ball of the foot. Lower the back knee, arms can rise, find some length, exhale, start to twist to the right. So hook that left elbow outside the right thigh, hands back to heart center, let the gaze lift, and do whatever you'd like. You could tuck the back toes, you could keep the knee planted. One more full breath, long line of energy. Exhale, lower the knee down, unwind, frame the foot, start to heel toe this foot, take it to the other side for pigeon pose. So lowering ankle, knee, and as much as we can, trying to get that shin parallel to the short edge of the mat. <sighs> Finding space and fold, start to breathe into that right hip. Of course, using a blanket anywhere necessary. So if that right glute is hovering, Shove something in there. Make the earth come closer to you. Maybe a blanket, a block. <sighs> really feel this static sinking. And again, creating this energy dam on this side. <sighs> Getting any of that clutter, that mental, spiritual clutter out of the hips. And not bringing it into the new year. Relax the shoulders. Take one more breath. <sighs> Let it go. Start to lift up. Tuck the back toes. Keep the knee planted. We'll just send that the right knee back into a tabletop. So you could lift the knee and roll it out. You could just stretch it long. Whatever allows you to release it. We're just going to stay low. And then when you're ready, find child's pose. So knees could be narrow, knees could be wide, arms could be stretched out, they could be alongside the body. Whatever allows you to sink for like three minutes. We're just going to breathe here. And here, really tap into the breath. Your body's close, you're in like um, a closure here, so... The only thing you can probably hear is your breath or notice or feel. So notice all of that. The belly pressing into the thighs with each inhale. And finding more and more of a release on every exhale. <sighs> Enduring every moment of this pose. We'll just take one more full breath, allowing it to flow through the body. And then stretch the arms a um, in front of you. Start to ground into the fingertips, and we're just going to peel ourselves up. Keeping the knees stacked beneath the hips, you might need to shift back on your mat. We're going to start to walk the hands forward, sinking the chest or the forehead down, finding puppy pose. So at least the forehand, forearms are grounded. And then you could find what feels good for you here, how intense you want to take it. You could have the chest lower to the mat and the chin grounds. 
feeling this in the low back, breathing into the curviness. Or, of course, you could just have the, for, the forehead grounded, not just, but have the forehead grounded here and breathe into this back bend. You want those thighs parallel up and down. We'll just take one more breath here. And let it go. On an inhale, start to um, slide forward. I can't find my, my verbs today. Slide forward. Ground the belly, tops of the feet on the mat. I want to do a, um, kind of like a yin pose, a yin yoga pose, but it's good for the shoulders. So come find sphinx pose or seal pose. Forearms pressing into the mat. And then let the left arm kind of cross the body, and the right arm's going to cross the body the other way. So coming oh, really alongside. The, the hand's going to come off of the mat and let the palm face up. So we're crossing the whole, the whole upper arm over, but keep the shoulder in line with its normality. So keep it where it normally is. We don't want to really strain it over. And then as much as you can, tuck your chin, ground the forehead. Again, maybe you find a blanket or a block. With the left arm, let the left arm come alongside the body and as you situate yourself. And then maybe you let the left hand come to the low back and possibly slide it up the back. Whatever feels good. Then with that right hand that's off the mat, we're going to bend it and bring the left hand kind of like to the shoulder blades. Maybe the middle shoulder blades. Maybe it just reaches the left shoulder blade. And then again, find your situation with your head. Relax the back of the neck. Maybe the fingers touch at the back. Maybe your hands link. Maybe not. Maybe you hold onto your shirt, a strap, wherever you are. Just take another breath into the upper arm, into the shoulder. We'll take a few more. <laughs> Just to settle in. I think this is called sleeping owl pose. One more full round wherever you are. <sighs> we'll, re we'll reach the right arm back over, release the left hand from the back. Pour weight into the left hand, into the mat, as you lift the chest up to slide the right arm back. Again, find sphinx pose, seal pose, just shaking it out. Maybe you roll the shoulders. We do a lot in the legs for yoga, so it, sometimes it's like a nice, Nice little treat to get into the, the upper body. So let's cross the right arm across the chest and then slide the left arm across the body. Again, keep that shoulder in line. Let the right arm come alongside the body. Maybe you bend the left arm. Maybe you let the right arm slide up the back. Finding the grounding in the head. Maybe your fingers meet. And then you allow the, your energy to go to your shoulder. One more static sinking breath. Mm. Start to release your fingers if they're touching. Slide that right arm down. Plant the hand, pour weight, lift the chest up to slide the left arm back. This time we're going to plant the hands next to the shoulders, hug the elbows in. Tuck the chin, ground the forehead. On your inhale, lift up, find baby cobra. On your exhale, slither yourself back down. Inhale, rise up, shoulder blades pinching towards each other. Maybe you come a little higher, cobra. Exhale, come back down. Inhale, lift up. Maybe we find a mama cobra. <laughs> and then exhale, come back down one more time. Inhale, rise up as much as you'd like. Maybe you lengthen the arms. Exhale, lower yourself back down. Let's flip onto the back. Ooh, that's some cracks. Flip onto the back and um, let the arms come out to a T as we keep the knees bent. 
Start to fold the knees off to the left side and just pause here. Maybe you switch up your footing, of course, get comfortable, but just find a supine twist. Maybe the right leg stacks over the left leg and let the head just tilt towards the right shoulder. Take a few breaths here in this supine twist. On your inhale, start to lift the knees up, planting the feet down. Let the knees fall off towards the right side. Again, finding your way, your twist. Let the head just tilt towards the left shoulder. Inhale, lift those knees up. You could hug them in towards the chest. Maybe find a happy baby. Letting the knees really curl in towards the armpits. Arms sliding up the legs, capturing the feet with the hands. Maybe you rock back and forth. You can lengthen one leg and then the other. Be mindful of what your body wants. I offer a lot because your body, and your body might not even want that much. <laughs> Start to rock back and forth vertically on the spine. Have some fun, like a little baby, and then once you're ready, come all the way up to sit. <laughs> Let's stretch the legs out long beside us, um, literally like a split. <laughs> Ground down through your sits bones. Let the toes come towards the sky. Keep those knees safe. Sit up and then just start to walk the hands forward as much as you can. Maybe you stretch your arms out wide. Maybe you can plant the forearms and breathe into the inner thighs. We all have a different range here. Maybe you breathe into the lower back. But definitely the goal is to stretch the groin here. Take another full breath. Stay here for the exhale. <sighs> Inhale, rise up. We're going to close the legs, have them both long in front of us. Find your Dandasana staff pose. So really getting structured here in the body, grounding the backs of the legs. Toes are coming towards the face. Sit up tall. Feel navel to spine here. One more breath. <sighs> Inhale, reach the arms out and up. Exhale, hinge at your hips and fold forward. Let the hands just hold on to wherever they land. And then tuck the chin and round the spine, really breathing into the low back. One more breath just like this. And then begin to curl yourself back up to sit. We'll take our final pose. Slide the hands back behind you. Keep about seven, eight inches between your fingertips and the glutes. You have two options. You could lift up with the legs long or bend the knees and come into a reverse tabletop. Our last pose. So give it all. Give it your all. On together, we'll take a deep inhale to lift the hips up. If the legs are long, let those toes touch. If the legs are bent, really rooting down through all four corners of the feet. Open the chest, maybe drop the head. Take another full breath. On your exhale, slowly make your way all the way down to your final resting pose. Finding Shavasana. Take up space. Make this feel nice. And maybe you don't want to take up space. Maybe you want to curl up. Do whatever feels good. This is your full moon practice. <laughs> you could put on a nice Shavasana song, find an eye pillow, maybe stick blocks between, beneath the knees. Let's just take one more collective deep inhale together. Pause at the top. Take another sip in. Open the mouth, sigh it out. Wow, really notice everything melting into the mat. Letting this go just for a couple minutes. We'll f connect with the breath here. Connect with all that we've just done. <laughs> 
And let it go here. Start to deepen your breath. <sighs> Allow the exhales to waken up the body. Maybe you wiggle the toes, wiggle the fingers. Rock the head back and forth. And then let the arms come up overhead for a full body stretch. Bend the knees in. Give yourself a nice hug before letting the knees fall off to one side and slowly build your way up to sit. Taking your time, keeping the eyes soft, will come into a comfortable cross-legged seat. <sighs> Once you get there, roll the shoulders up by the ears. Back and down. Let the palms face up for a moment. Again, invite in that expansion, invite in that adventure, that energy that you cultivated during your cancer season of 2020. Excuse me. <laughs> Allow it to all come here. Gather into the palms. And then we'll lift the hands up to heart center. Closing in all of this energy, spreading the fingers wide. Let's close this practice out just with one sound, one chant of Om together. Of course, feel free to join me or to listen in. We'll take one deep inhale for Om. Uh, Lift the base of the thumbs to the third eye. Lean back. Invite in the light, love, and all of the abundance that's coming towards us in this new year. On your exhale, fold forward to seal in your practice. Namaste.